Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Reading from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 7, verses 1 to 15. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Stand at the gate of the Lord's house and there proclaim this message. Hear the word of the Lord, all you people of Judah who come through these gates to worship the Lord. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says, reform your ways and your actions and I will let you live in this place. Do not trust in deceptive words and say, this is the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. If you really change your ways and your actions and deal with each other justly, if you do not oppress the foreigner, the fatherless or the widow, and do not shed innocent blood in this place, if you do not follow other gods to your own harm, then I will let you live in this place in the land I gave your ancestors forever and ever. But look, you are trusting in deceptive words that are worthless. Will you steal, murder, commit adultery and perjury, burn incense to Baal and follow other gods you have not known, and then come and stand before me in this house, which bears my name and say we are safe. Safe to do all these detestable things. Has this house which bears my name become a den of robbers to you? But I have been watching, declares the Lord. Go now to the place in Shiloh where I first made a dwelling for my name and see what I did to it because of the wickedness of my people Israel. While you were doing all these things, declares the Lord, I spoke to you again and again, but you did not listen. I called you, but you did not answer. Therefore, what I did to Shiloh, I will now do to the house that bears my name, the temple you trust in, the place I gave you and your ancestors. I will thrust you from my presence, just as I did all your fellow Israelites. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, now it's my turn. Uh, and I wonder what you expect from me. I've heard a lot of different sermons. I've heard so many different styles of preaching. Uh, and frankly, I'm uh, just a candle in a room full of floodlights right now. But a candle, you see, is meant for burning. And I'm going to burn the best that I can for you today. Um, I, I, I wonder what you expect me to sound like, though. Uh, I can hear some of you in your heads asking, is he black? <laughs> he's not white, that's clear, he's, he's, maybe he's, he's, there's definitely a little black in there, maybe, uh, and I, I've heard that before, and I've heard, um, uh, a a Andrea, there's a, a Hispanic man waiting for you in the lobby, uh, and I've heard, um, uh, all too often in the city of Evansville, um, people from Saudi Arabia or other parts of the Arab world uh, coming to ask me for directions in Arabic and being <laughs> highly disappointed uh, because I do not know any Arabic. Um, and I just wonder um, what you expect from me. Uh, it did kind of hurt when one of my Arabic friends in a summer session of biology said, "Oh." I thought you were one of us. Uh, and one time I was even confused for a white woman, uh, which is a story that I will save for another time. Just what am I exactly, a mountain? Can you just, everyone looks at me and sees something different. Am I one of those weird magic eye puzzles? Uh, am I an ink blot test where you see what you need to see? Uh, in high school, uh, I was the diversity in my hometown. Uh, I'm sure that I was uh, on some papers somewhere and got, the, got somebody money for something. Uh, there was, however, one other uh, person of color in my high school, and his name was Dante. Uh, and so my administration and faculty were basically overwhelmed by this. Uh, two was too many to keep straight. 
You see, I don't know how many times I was called Dante, and one time in particular, I was pursued down the hallway by a very perturbed uh, treasurer uh, uh, shouting, Dante, Dante, and I strolled along my way because I am not Dante. <laughs> Dante, you are not in track and you shouldn't be in the building after hours. She was so right, Dante was not in track and Dante should not have been in the building, but what she saw, and what she knew were not the same thing. The point of that story is sometimes it's hard to tell what you're looking at. Uh, now, I'm not much of a title preacher, but you know, this sermon, this, uh, uh, all these sermons I'm hearing, I'm trying to stretch out, get into new things, and uh, I'm gonna try out a title for you. I'm presenting a message called A Vision of the City of God. A Vision of the City of God. The Bible uh, tells us that Jesus and Jeremiah both went to the temple, uh, and they both caused a little trouble while they were there. Both Jesus and Jeremiah earned threats on their lives. See, people don't like it when you disturb their temples. They really do not like it at all. They know what they see, and they don't need your vision. The Bible tells us that the wages of sin is death. The prophets tell us that we are about to get paid. Actions have consequences. Bad theology breeds bad public policy, and bad, bad public policy breeds oppression and violence. Yeah. The lost and the broken storm elementary schools and slaughter children. 60,000 Syrians are butchered in the streets. Yeah. Palestinians are cut off from the rest of the world by an oppressive regime backed by many, many Christians. <coughs> Every three seconds, someone dies of hunger and hunger-related causes. Every three. In my home city alone, 500 people live in danger of becoming homeless every single day. The cries of the oppressed grow louder and louder, so many seek to plug their ears to these unpleasant sounds. What am I supposed to say? Except sometimes it's hard to tell what you're looking at, and we need clear vision. Jeremiah was warning of the coming destruction, but Jeremiah also had vision. Judah was rebellious. But Jeremiah had a vision. Israel was wayward, but Jeremiah had a vision. The covenant might be broken, but Jeremiah 31 says the days are coming when I will make a new covenant. Yeah. I will rebuild this city. The country might be torn apart. The economy might be in shambles. The housing market might have tanked. Foreclosures might be at an all-time high, but I hope that you have a vision. Jeremiah 32, 15 says, houses and fields, vineyards will again be bought in this land. Nothing is too hard for God. Isaiah also had a vision in chapter one about a faithful city becoming a perverted one. God's people can't ignore justice and go about their day at the temple. The people were supposed to defend the oppressed, but their hands were full of blood. We must strive to be a faithful city, one that defends the cause of the foreigner and the oppressed. See, I believe that the city of God is an inclusive one, that God loves the whole earth and everyone in it, that he has a plan of salvation that extends to everyone, into the east and to the west, in the north and the south, but without the vision of inclusiveness and justice, without a city vision, religion is just another brick in the wall. Religion becomes evil when it strips people of their humanity, when it keeps silence in the face of oppressive systems that do the same. In these situations, the true prophetic power and transformational value of religion to society is undermined. The walls of the city have been breached by the enemy. Now when these things happen, when I get overwhelmed with the state of the world, with the fallen condition that it's in, I look to world flight at times. I think about some glad morning. I think about that trumpet sounding. 
I want to say to the world, you win. I don't want to do this anymore. You win. I am just going to wait on Jesus to come back. Some people just want their stories. My mom loves soap operas. She was shattered when Guiding Light went off the air. That was the end of her world. Some people just want their stories, a world, a reality different than the one that we have. When this world has broken me, that's exactly how I feel. But giving in to fantasy can make one feel better, but it denies the way the world is in reality. Vision, on the other hand, accepts the way the world is and the way that things are. But vision denies that this is the way things have to be. I've been told that the world has evil people in it, and that's just all there is to it. Give up on trying to mitigate the damage they cause. Grab yourself a sidearm and hunker down. It's going to be a bumpy ride. The best I can hope for is to defend my family from a world that some say is getting more and more depraved. Give up on the world. It's a loose ball, but you can at least make sure you're on the winning team. Uh, I recall my wor the words of my elementary school basketball coach. He used to tell me, when the ball is loose, whoever wants it the, the worst is going to get it. I got to tell you today that Jesus wants the world. Jesus wants to have possession of the ball. Jesus didn't just come to be a person savior, an individual I Christ. The message of Christ is a world saving message, a message of social transformation. Yeah, yeah. Dorte Zerla tells us in her book, Suffering, that we can't be numb. We must be open to the pain and suffering of the world so that we can alleviate it. The moral vision of the city of God, in contrast to the cities that we live in, provides attention. And tension provides a basis for moral action. Prophetic vision can look at attention and see how we get from the city that we have to the city that God told us we can have. Wow. Amen. But religion can sometimes lack this vital vision. During the Holocaust, a Slovakian archbishop, writing in response to a Jewish woman who did not yet know her fate, she was asking him to intervene to stop the deportation of Jews for the worry of hunger and disease in government camps. The archbishop replied, it's not just a matter of deportation. You will not die there from hunger and disease. They will slaughter all of you there old and young alike, women and children at once. It's the punishment that you deserve for the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. You have only one solution. Come over to our religion, and then I will work to annul this decree, the temple of the Lord. The archbishop was not alone. In general, writes Irving Greenberg in Pillar of Smoke, Pillar of Fire, there is an inverse ratio between the presence of fundamentalist Christianity and the survival of Jews during the Holocaust period, and this in the heart of Christian Europe, the temple of the Lord. Religion failed to let the city of God come forth. It let people discriminate and hate in the name of God and then stand around and say, this is the temple of the Lord. I can deny rights to homosexual couples who want to have a family, the temple of the Lord. I can live in luxury, the temple of the Lord. Yeah. We can solve homelessness, but we won't because that would take too much tax money, the temple of the Lord. Yeah. 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 We could solve death by hunger, but what would it really cost us, the temple of the Lord? There's some evil that we want to be unexplainable. As long as it's unexplainable, I can't be accountable for it. It's hard to write about injustice. I just want to cover my eyes. Like a little child made into a victim, instructed to cover my eyes on my way out of the school so that I won't be traumatized any further. But I am not a little child. I won't choose the path of victimization. No matter how many times I resolve to quit preaching about this. No matter how many times I try to hide my Bible from myself, the vision of the city of God always pulls me back in, and God's word burns deep down in the marrow of my bones. Yeah, yeah. Well, what this means for me is that I'm going to have to face the devil in this world. 
I will have to feel the flames scorch my skin. I will have to open myself to the suffering in the world. Because if I don't take evil in the world seriously, then how can I take a message of salvation for that world seriously? I might still want to say I, I don't want to preach anymore. I don't even want to think about this. Come on, people. We have been waiting for thousands of years. I am sick of praying, come Lord Jesus. But when I close my eyes, I swear, sometimes I can see it. A crystal river. Someone standing by an open door. A giant tree with 12 crops of fruit. Leaves that heal nations. A world without the curse of illness or death. A city in which there is no night. See, the lamps have been made obsolete and even the sun has been extinguished because in that city, Jesus is the light. Yes. Yes. Right. And despite myself and all my anger and my misgivings and my failures in faith, I hear that ancient promise, look, I am coming soon and I find myself believing. But enough about me. That's far enough about me. I want to tell you about my favorite person. Uh, maybe you can guess who it is. Uh, he's the one who was born of a virgin. Uh, he's the one who walked on water. He's the one who, when you ran out of wine at your wedding, decided to keep the party going. He is the one who had nails pressed into his hands and his feet. He's the one who had his side pierced. He's the one who borrowed that tomb and gave it right back three days later. He is the one whose word endures forever when the grass withers and the flowers fall. Has anybody in here had your grass wither? Has anybody in here ever had all your flowers disappear and find that the only thing that matters in life is that the word of God endures. Is there anyone who knows what that is like? He is the one who called me out of darkness to walk in his magnificent light. Dr. Boone said he is the alpha and he's the omega. At the same time, if that doesn't blow your mind, nothing will. Yes. He's the one who, like Jeremiah in the city of God, gave the temple a little trouble when he got sick of their everyday low prices costing the poor so much. He's the one of whom John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He is the one on whom the Spirit came down like a dove. And why? To proclaim good news. Bind up broken hearts. Proclaim a liberation and freedom for the bound. The one who, despite the goal of theodicy, doesn't need me to justify him right. and is the only one who could justify me. Yes. Can you guess who it is? It starts with a J and it ends with an Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> he is the living vision of the kingdom of God, and he's the reason I can still stand and say, despite all of the evil in the world, yeah. there is love. Yeah. And that is worth fighting for. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen.